let's talk about white box or gray renders. This is normally the first step where you're showing your client the geometry and you want them to verify if things are correct or if things need to be changed. You're not looking at materials, you're simply looking at camera angles and the geometry. So when we're looking at this, uh, we're going to use the V-Ray override material to render this out. We're going to do actually two different ways. Um, but it's important to understand that you don't want to get into complexities with the client. You just want, is the geometry correct? Are the camera angles correct? And they can say yes and no and choose a camera angle. Uh, because sometimes clients like to get into a whole bunch of changes and design direction and so on and so forth. And if you want to do that, that's your choice. But that can add a ton of time to, to getting the render over to them. So really, the idea is you set up the cameras, you get these uh, renders over to them fast, and instead of it taking hours to render out, you really want it to render out in minutes. Um, so you can get them to them, they can choose what they want, and then you know you're not working on uh, fixing geometry that's not going to be seen. You know, there's, you've got all the stuff behind the camera, you don't need to work on that, so don't bother. Uh, but if you don't know which camera angle, then you're going to be doing a lot of extra modeling um, of everything in the room, stuff which doesn't even get seen in the, in the visual. So you don't want to spend hours working on stuff that you don't need. All right. So to start with, if we bring up the render setup and we're going to bring up the material editor. Now, you really need to go into V-Ray. You need a V-Ray material. And I've reset this to default. I reset it by going to Arnold and then going back. Close. Going back to V-Ray. Um, you get the error message, you can ignore it. It's just because there's V-Ray materials in the scene and Arnold doesn't know what to do with them. Okay. So now this is reset to default. Now normally I like to do mine at about this resolution. You know, I'm doing an HD image, 1280 by 720. Uh, but even if I'm not, I'm doing some other type of resolution. Um, I'll, so, sorry, some other type of ratio. Um, I like to do this kind of resolution, you know, about a thousand, just over a thousand, not, not too much. Um, you don't want to be getting into all of the details on the wrinkles and stuff like this. Uh, also, you, one of the other reasons you don't want to be getting into the details and having a client looking at it at this stage is because the material isn't on there. And when the material is on, it's going to look completely different. So there's no point in them making changes to the scene, which they can't even see. Okay. So if we take this and you go global switches. Now I'm going to right click here and switch all to expert just because there are some changes I may like to make which aren't available in default. Change that. So you click on override material and then you just take a clean V-Ray material and plug it in there. You don't need to make any changes to this at all. Now at this stage, um, let me just see. I'm just checking that my lights and hidden lights, even if the lights are hidden, you know, if you press shift L, you hide all the lights in the scene. Um, so even if they're hidden, they will still render. Uh, and let me just check if it's saving out in the frame buffer. Okay. So then you would put in, you know, I'd put in here, or I'd probably actually put in here. And you want to be going, you know, Just saving this out. And at this stage, just save it out as a JPEG. That's fine. And then render elements, just turn these off. You don't need to have, oh, actually no. Render elements, put denoiser on there. So if I clear this, you can just add V-Ray denoiser. Uh, just because if the scene is slightly noisy, you know, this will help clean it up and you can get a better image over to your client without having to mess around and, and Photoshop and all that sort of thing. So that should be good by default. Okay. So that's going to save and we've got the right resolution. Now, one other thing is... I'm going to change this to bucket and change this subdiffs to four. That makes a very quick render. 
um, because the render is only going to go to this or this. Most likely it's going to reach four subdivs before it reaches that noise threshold. So then the buckets are going to stop rendering. Okay. Now, I'm going to click render. So this is too dark really to use here, and the problem is, is we have the override material, and it's going on everything, it's going on the shears, it's going on the windows, so all we've got is where the windows are open, there's lights coming into the room. And we've got some lights in the room, but that's it. So really what we need to do is in the render settings, when you have your override material, you have an exclude list. So you can click on here, and obviously you've got all these different things in here which you can choose. Um, so what I'm going to do, just to make sure I get the right things, I'm going to press Alt and W to come out of this view. I'm going to go into this top view, Alt W, make it full size. I'm just going to, with the middle mouse wheel, scroll back and holding Alt and pushing down on the middle mouse wheel, come around here and look at this. And then I'm going to select this window and I'm going to press Control and select the next window, next window, next window, next window. I'm going to press Alt and Q to isolate those. And I'm just going to check the names of these. So these are the AM... So these are arch model windows here. I'm going to go into my render settings. Okay, and click on the exclude button. And I'm going to go down. It's these windows here. And I'm just going to click this arrow uh, to push them over here. Now here I clicked on one. I pressed shift and clicked on the bottom one. That arrow brings them in. Click on OK. And now if I come out of isolation mode, press Alt W and go back into this view. Because they're excluded... Uh, from the override material. Now if I click render. Okay, now I have a lot more light coming into the room. I'm just going to exclude the uh, the shears as well. See if I can get some more light in that way. And these are called default right now, so let's change that to shears. And again, in the render setup, I'm going to click on exclude. And just move down. I'll uh, just type in here shears. And it brings me straight to shears, move it over here, click OK. Render again. Now here we're getting blowout, so I'm just going to adjust the material uh, to handle that. You can adjust the material or you can adjust the camera. But in this case, I'm just going to adjust the material. I'm just going to make this a bit darker. And by making it darker, we'll have less GI coming off the material, off the items as well. Just gonna, I'm just going to do a little render of this area just to see, make sure it's okay. Okay, so now we've got more, a lot more detail happening just by making it uh, darker material. So let's render this again. Okay, so this noise, this render is a very noisy render. And if you already do noise when you put it on, it saves out all these additional passes here. Um, but that's why I have the denoiser on, is because then you can just go uh, duh, 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 effects result. And, you know, it gets rid of the majority of the noise. And you can send this through to your client. Um, and your client can see are things correct? Are they roughly correct? Are they in the right places? Is this what he wanted in terms of side ta uh, lamps on the side table? Is this really the idea he had for the chandelier? Is it too big? Is it too small? Um, and he can just verify everything's correct and he likes the camera angle. Now, also with this image, I would take this into Photoshop and just bump up some things and edit this a little bit just to make it stand out a little bit more and lighten up the walls and the room and everything else so it doesn't appear to be a, a dark room. Uh, but if I was in a rush, I would probably just send this off just as it is. And that would also suffice. Now let's look at another way of doing this. Um, the other way to do it... I'm just going to save this out separately. White box 2. Um, the other way to do this is with a different material. Now, 
to do this, let's say you haven't set up any light, so just so you can see what I'm doing, if I press Shift and L, all the lights will hide. So now there's no light. If I come here and in my uh, global settings, where is it? Here we go, global switches, I turn off hidden lights. So now none of those lights will render. And now what I need to do is change this material. So if I bring up the material editor again, uh, I need this V-Ray light material. And if I plug this in over here, make that an instance, and then I need maps for V-Ray, and I take a V-Ray dirt map, and I plug this into here. Take this V-Ray dirt material and set it to half the height of the room. So if I, if I say this room's about three meters, so I set this to half of that, so 1500. And what that means is it's going to have the black down in the bottom areas, and the V-Ray light material is going to be white, uh, 1500 up. So really, you normally want about half the size of your room. You know, if you've got a massive room and it's 10 meters, just set it to 5,000. For this, you don't need to have anything in this exclude list. So let's move all of this back over here. Because you don't have any lights, just press Shift F so I can see the save frame, see what my camera's seeing. And let's render this. So let's bring up two, two other issues here. The first one is back faces. So this is a single face. This is not shelled or anything else. And we've got an opacity map on there. So one side is going to be the back face. And it's always going to render out black. Uh, the way around that is in your material, what you do is you bring in a V-Ray two-sided material, which is right here. Just double click that. Bring this into the front material. Double click on this and make the translucency black. And that will mean that there's no translucency going on. And then if you plug this into your override material, now what that's telling V-Ray is both sides are the same. So now, if I take this little region here and render, you'll see that comes out the same as the rest of the room. And that will apply to anything which has these back faces on and which renders out black. So that handles that issue. Now the second issue is this little hole here. So really we, we want to have maybe that's white or something else. You could leave it black if you're in a rush or you don't mind. But a simple solution for that is you bring, you go to rendering and environment. You can also just hit the number eight and bring this up. And what we're going to do is you can change the, by default, this is black. And so you're seeing black out there. But if you change this to white, you think, oh, I'm going to see white out there. But normally you don't. So we'll just check this and see. Okay, well that's fine. You get a kind of light gray, even though it's set to white. So the other way to handle this is you can click use map and you can click on here and click general. And you really want the output map. And in your material editor, because to, because to edit this, you need to edit it in the material editor. You can drag and drop this over. Instance, click OK, double click on here, and then on the output amount, you know, 5 is normally OK. Sometimes you need to push it up to 10. And that's going to be 5 times more white than that. So now we have white outside the windows, and that would handle that problem. So now you have this, this image, and that's what you want. And we're just going to do a render of the whole space to see how long it takes. So I think the first way of doing it looks nicer. It can be noisier because you've got the lights there and all the noise from the lights coming into the scene. But the first way of doing it, I think, is, is better. It's more natural lighting and you can see how it's actually going to look. This is also a very cool, very nice way of doing it. Um, and I think it's good to have both tools in your arsenal, you know, especially if you're in a rush to get the white box or the gray render over to your client and you're in a situation where they've given you no time. So you need to get this done quickly and you've thrown together geometry and now you need to get this over to them and you haven't set up any lights. This is perfect. You've got it together, you've got it done and you can just edit this slightly in Photoshop and send it through and you're done.